can start if you like. Okay, being in a technical university, certainly artificial intelligence and robotics is probably one of the least unknown themes that we will be looking at. And uh, starting with artificial intelligence, we can of course think of a number of scenarios in which um, this technology is already uh, implemented. Think of Siri or other uh, tools that are used in smartphones. Um, and more specifically, we might think of cases of the soon to arrive on the market self-driving cars. Now, self-driving cars are an example of artificial intelligence in a sense that not only we need to ensure those cars to be able to technically uh, um, drive safely and in accordance with uh, the guidelines that we normally expect from a driver. Think of an accident that involves normally human beings and our imperfect ways of, of dealing with a situation of panic. Supposedly the cars um, will put us in a safer scenario, in, in a situation in which the right thing to do will take place. But it's not as simple as one might think initially. And let me give you an example. This is called the, the trolley case. A very famous example used in philosophy. Initially, uh, it was used by Philippa Foot and then uh, Judith Jarvis Thompson sub subsequently added to this scenario the, the following picture. You uh, are next to uh, a rail track and to a lever that allows for the trolley that is arriving to be re-diverted into another uh, rail track. Now, in the uh, in the first case, the problem is the following. You see that if you would not pull the lever, the trolley will end up running over five people. If you pull the lever, you will redirect the trolley and that will end up running over only one person. Now, I don't know what you think about it, but you might want to know that the vast majority of people will actually opt for pulling the lever and redirect the trolley. Of, of course, not happily, but just on the basis that they will be saving four more lives. On the other hand, another example is that you are on a footbridge on top of the rail track and instead of having to put the lever, you could push one person in front of the trolley. Yeah, let's assume that this person is sufficiently heavy to stop a trolley and you would get the same results. Namely, by killing one person, you will be able to stop the killing of the five. Now, in that case, the vast majority of people uh, will, in fact, refuse from, uh, they will refuse to push the person. And this is interesting and we will look into it uh, in another topic, but uh, in this case, certainly what we are considering is that you will have an utilitarian approach on the one hand, so that of having to maximize and save as many lives as possible. In contrast, when the footbridge uh, example takes place, there is a tendency for a human being uh, to not directly get engaged with the killing of one person. Now, Self-driving cars, in a way, put us in a favorable position because, supposedly at least, if everything goes well, once we will have granted the car the ethical guidelines that we want them to follow, we won't have any problems in um, acting in the most moral way 
once an accident takes place. But is it really that simple? The MIT in Boston has uh, put up this interesting website called uh, the Moral Machine in which you have a number of uh, options and combinations that imagine what a self-driving car should do in certain situations. So for example, if you know that in the car you have two people and there is one person crossing uh, on the zebras, um, would you run them over in order to save the lives of the person that are in the cars because they are two against one? And what about if it's the other way around? Would you kill the driver inside the car in order to save the two? So, like, say, redirecting the car towards a wall. Of course, those are a bit of a stretch in terms of uh, scenarios, but uh, whether we like it or not, those variables absolutely need to be addressed and to be thought truly if we want to conceive the possibility of, of uh, granting artificial intelligence, in this case the cars, but it could apply to other computer devices, so much independence, so much uh, decisional power over real case scenarios. And this, of course, is something that then can be expanded or rather integrated in scenarios where we talk of robots and humanoids that in a sense uh, continue this um, assessment of how much uh, independence and autonomy should we grant to uh, machines and how much do we want to rely on their judgment um, in certain situations. So that's what we will look into next is us and uh, robots.